Hi, my name's Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand, Forex and gold fundamental and technical analysis. If you're new or returning uh, watcher to my uh, weekly videos, a warm welcome to you both. And uh, please don't forget to like, subscribe and share with your fellow trading colleagues as it helps support the channel uh, to get uh, views <coughs> on YouTube. Anyways, let's jump into uh, the um, the upcoming week and uh, the week ahead uh, f uh, from, I guess, a macro perspective. And then we get down into the technicals and a bit more in-depth fundamentals. So in the week ahead, um, this is from Trading Economics. It says the short holiday week in the US will be dominated by the start of the earnings season, a hot inflation report, which is what we are, we're looking at, and speeches from several Fed officials, also monetary policy decisions in the Euro area, Canada, Turkey, and New Zealand. So we just focused on the Euro area, Canada, and New Zealand will be in the spotlight. Um, and then finally, from a risk sentiment perspective, the war in Ukraine will not uh, leave the headlines and investors looking for any signs of a breakthrough. So, you know, from risk, off I guess to turn more risk back on and if you want to get into the nitty gritty I'll leave a link to this uh, this page in the um, in the uh, in the comment section so getting uh, into the technicals and fundamentals and starting off as we usually do on the dollar index and the dollar index which is a measure of dollar strength um, against uh, the major currencies like the euro the yen um, and the pound uh, pretty much going again from strength to strength as expected as I've pretty much been saying um, all year so uh, it's just the way that we use this if you're new is to understand uh, the dollar strength overall and then use this as confluence so for example prices pull back into a demand zone and then you get you know some sort of bullish candle entry it's a bit more to it than that but just from a really basic level, you can uh, look for co that confluence on trading. For example, the dollar yen, dollar Swiss. If that you know pulls back to a um, a, uh, a demand zone uh, on those currency pairs, if you're looking to trade, you know uh, 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 the, the dollar uh, go long, right? And this isn't me telling you what to do. This isn't financial advice, but just basically what the analysis that I'm looking at. If you're looking at going short on the dollar, for me, there's really nothing. Um, that I'm interested in. Yes, there's some levels from back in 2020, uh, but, and if you do want to take those, if you do want to take those, then uh, there is a probably supply zone that covers all that area there. Uh, and then you've got one right at the highs from March 2020. Um, and again, if you do want to look for short trades, then that 10, 100, 105 would be the area to look for any kind of short trades. Again, not on this uh, pair, just as a more of a confluence. But fundamentally, um, for me, uh, I'll just wait for pullbacks on the dollar as the Fed officials are reinforcing the message that rate hikes or hikes are heading higher. So Harker expects series of deliberate and methodical uh, Fed hikes and Barkin says Fed could raise rates by half a point if needed. So everything you need to probably know is in the headlines and rate hikes generally have the um, the effect of, um, of appreciating a currency overall. So um, for me, the dollar is still a buy. And if it's a buy for me, um, I take again a uh, a bit of an approach that I'm not looking to you know go long and short on the dollar or any currency pairs. If I've got a fundamental bias, then I'm just looking to go long um, on that pair. If I've got a short bias, then I'm only looking for short trades and I'm looking for you know pullbacks, right? So that's pretty much what I'm looking for. Doesn't mean I'm going to buy the dollar only if it comes back to you know this demand zone um, because it might not. But it you know, use the dollar index as confluence with maybe your dollar buys or dollar sells. Um, so for me, path of least resistance is still to the upside and let's see what happens with that. So moving on to the dollar yen and understanding where we are from, you know, a, a fundamental perspective. Again, it's just about really buy, um, drawing your demand zones and looking at where you want to get involved in this, right? So prices did come down um, last week, week before into that demand zone, which was actually should have been drawn from here so it came down into that demand zone and now we have 
price is making higher highs, higher lows. I'll draw it from there, from that last bearish candle there. And if prices do come back down here, for me, that's gonna be a really nice zone to look for any uh, buy opportunities. <laughs> Um, you do have, I think, uh, a bit of a supply zone, not a strong one, uh, not really a strong one. I hesitate to draw it, but it is there. It sits right on top of it. But um, yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not keen on that from a daily supply zone perspective. Um, I'll keep it there, but in the way that we draw supply and demand, and everyone who's joined the private members group, uh, that is definitely not a strong area. Even though that that has moved, that has moved, I think maybe about four or 500 pips, something like that. Yeah, about 400 pips. Just from a, a, a daily supply zone um, and following the rules that we do, that wouldn't be classified as a strong one. That doesn't mean that it can't, you know, react from up here and go down. Just saying that if you are getting short, uh, that wouldn't be something technically um, that I would look for. Um, and for me, I'm, I'm more looking for uh, dollar buys than I am uh, yen buys. So I'm not really concerned with looking at supply zones. I'm more looking at um, the demand zone down here. And even if we get a pullback down to that 1850 uh, area, that's going to be an absolute bargain, I think, currently, uh, with the way that the fundamentals are, with the yen, the Bank of England, sorry, Bank of Japan, are not even looking to high rates anytime soon or do anything with their monetary policy, I don't think so. Um, yeah, the dollar for me is the one to buy. Moving on to the dollar Swiss. And the dollar Swiss, um, we did have a demand zone here. Prices didn't come down to that daily demand, unfortunately. It wasn't a daily demand um, that we could have got involved in, but uh, we do have now an area of demand. And in fact, we've got hidden demand right here as well. For those of you who understand hidden demand. So that's an area, in fact, I don't mind looking at <clears throat> to get involved in uh, a, a trade right there. So there's that. Currently we are in, uh, we have got a supply zone right there, which prices could start to um, react from and it looks like they are reacting and again when you get wide zones like this one of the things you can do <clears throat> just one of the things you can do is break the zone down and look for support and resistance you know we use uh, uh, many technical tools and uh, one of them is uh, support uh, and resistance within supply and demand zones and uh, I do have a video which uh, explains that supply and support and resistance really are supply and demand zones um, but uh, yeah, you've got an area there within that wide uh, supply zone that you would probably want to look for short trades. Not every single uh, level within this area here, it would be you know a level worth taking, right? You still want to break it down. If you go down to maybe the four hour chart, still look for your support and resistance. If in this case, it would be resistance if you were looking for short trades, right? Same thing if you were looking for a buy <clears throat> in this demand zone here. Again, this is only one of the things, only one. The things I look towards um, when it comes to analysis, but uh, for me that is a really nice, looks like a really nice buy um, trade that potentially I'm looking for, and even better would be somewhere down here. That would actually be a really nice trade. I think down in that 92 round number. So interested in that area to look for buy trades, and if you're looking for sell trades, then right now or you know up, up at the highs would be where you would want to look for uh, short trades. So moving on to the dollar CAD. Uh, dollar CAD, not a pair that I'm interested in, um, but I will draw the uh, some supply and demand. So we've got a bit of demand there, and the nearest supply actually is all the way up here. So we've got, uh, let's see, uh, supply, yeah, any hidden supply in here? Nope. Um, so yeah, any pullbacks? Again, fundamentally, you want to be a buyer of, of really both currencies uh, in my book. Um, the, uh, Canada recently had uh, their jobless rate hits record low, stoking rate hike odds, right? So um, a good economy, a good economy. 
In the economy, that's adding 73,000 jobs. Unemployment rate falls to 5.3. The Bank of Canada expects to act forcefully at next decision, right? So um, when you've got two... Um, when you've got two central banks looking to high rates, not really a currency I'm interested in. But if you are, then and you want, and you think the dollar's a, a bargain here, then that's a buy. If you do think the Canadian dollar's a buy, then you have to really wait for prices to come back up to here uh, to look for any kind of short trades. Uh, New Zealand uh, dollar, US dollar again. Um, two central banks hiking rates, not really my uh, cup of tea when it comes to uh, looking at the trade. Or this uh, currency pair but again if you are we prices did react off of that supply zone right there um, if you do want to be a buyer with the New Zealand dollar that's a decent level to look for long trades and if you were looking at uh, looking at short trades as in buying the uh, the US dollar against New Zealand dollar then that area there is going to be the one to look for when you're looking for sell trades in fact in fact, in fact, you've got a bit of a wider zone just below it because it did make lower lows. So there are, there is that area there. And again, just break that down, that zone down, go down to the lower time frame, see where the, where there's uh, some support and resistance in there and uh, see if you want to get involved in that trade. Uh, pound dollar. The pound dollar I was saying last week that, uh, and I've been saying for the past few weeks that this is, uh, uh, the path of least resistance is to the downside and uh, pretty much played out you know as expected um, and uh, one of the reasons is because uh, the the Bank of England are slowing down um, it looks like they're slowing down their um their 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 hiking cycle so um, so let's get into that one second and just find it so the reason why yeah so grocers uh, lift staff pay as UK cost of living crisis deepens now the cost of living crisis is obviously energy bills going up um, petrol going up um, you know uh, uh, food going up right so um, if, if if people are paying more um, and the cost of living is going higher then what people generally tend to do and don't think of people in terms of like you know they're they're aliens or they're not you. Think about what you're doing in this in this current climate when you're seeing food go up, you're seeing you know petrol prices go up, energy costs go up. You're going to spend less, right? You're going to be a bit more conservative. And in an economy, um, you need people to spend money, right? You need you know people to go out and spend money, uh, buy you know things and clothes and uh, you know spend money at the pubs, go on holidays. But if people are not doing that, if you're not doing that because you're worried about spending um in the economy it potentially you know you could you know it could slow down right the economy could slow down and that's you know um could lead to potential you know stagflation or even a recession so the bank of england are well aware of this and so with that being said um because of the economic problems uh, that we are facing here in the uk or potential economic problems you're seeing the market price that in so a weaker dollar i'm sorry a weaker pound and uh, again stronger dollar would lead to this you know going to the downside so i'm going to zoom out a little bit and see if there's any obvious uh, demand zone levels that we need to uh, take into account i think there might be one around here there are there are several bank i think i might encompass that matter of fact uh yes yeah, so what i'll do is i'll probably get rid of this for now i do think um that uh, the, the 130 might be a bit of a, a flaw and all the, the Bank of England are still hiking rates right so I think this might be the low of the um, of the move or it could be the low of the move um, because they are still on a hiking cycle but I think once that hiking cycle stops that could drive the pound higher but once that hiking cycle stops then I do think again uh, more short trades so we do have a bit of a demand zone a longer term demand zone here um, and any supply zones are really kind of just sitting on top of that area I mean it pretty much encompasses all of this to be fair and again for me I think my the trade that I'd be looking for if I'm looking to short this uh, which I am would be probably starting from the 1.32 area uh, and higher so let's see what happens there but buying the pound at the moment I mean this is a decent buy definitely a decent buy technically but um, but fundamentally 
you know um, I'm not really looking to buy the pound at all more looking for short trades from that 132 uh, beyond and even up into the 13350 that would be a really nice area to look for any kind of short trades euro dollar so again um, you know as, as we were expected a lot of the guys in the group we got in at the top here took profits around here so I know I'm out of this trade now really nice trade that we took um, but I know some traders are, def are still in it um, uh, hoping that it will go a bit lower but I think the the, the, the floor again is the 108 levels uh, down to that low so um, I'm pretty much waiting on a pullback uh, up into if prices can pull back into that area there and there are reasons for it there are reasons for uh, prices pulling back into that area and into that zone and um, it's because uh, Ultimately, the the ECB are uh, jawboning or moral suasioning their, uh, their 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 euro, right? So ECB may rethink stimulus exit if outlook worsens, says Lane. So Lane says bond buying still to, uh, set to conclude in third quarter, and policymakers face opposing forces. ECB economist says, um, and it says the European Central Bank would need to reassess its timetable for withdrawing stimulus if the souring economic outlook weighs on the prospects of consumer prices, according to Chief Economist Philip Lane. Now, um, removing stimulus is generally positive for a currency, right? So if they remove stimulus, then you should see prices go higher. Also as well, um, the ECB are expected, or what they've been talking, and what the market expects for them to do is to is to start to hike rates at least by um, the fourth quarter of this year, which again is positive for uh, the euro. But um, with the crisis uh, going on in, in, in the Ukraine and um, and other things as well as the, uh, the uh, GDP, uh, uh, the effect of the war on GDP, I think the upside is very limited. So um, again, for me, I think any pullbacks are just a buying opportunity for the dollar. Um, you know, to short really in in this in this um, in this area, this one one eleven fifty uh, area, I think is probably the better area. Yeah, the one eleven forties to one eleven eighties or one 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 twelves. Um, but there could be some upside potential for the euro. I, again, I'm not really a buyer of the euro at all. Um, not really something that I, I'm looking to do. But if you are, I think prices have come down to a really nice uh, area to look for long trades. But um, I'm not really a buyer of the, uh, the euro. I'd rather just wait for prices to come back up into this area here and look for... Uh, uh, sell trades and buy the uh, the US dollar. So um, and again, the uh, I think the the the, uh, the ECB meeting this week will probably be more hawkish because they have to talk up the euro. They don't want the euro to go down because if, if the euro goes you know even lower and devalues even more, then that pushes inflation higher and they have an inflation problem. So um, they're expected to be very hawkish. But whether they um, whether they uh, will deliver is, is another question but it's always by the rumor with fundamentals anyways um i think that's the analysis done aussie dollar aussie dollar so there was prices did react i think probably more for this supply zone from way back when pierced through it but you know uh, basically held and in fact i would probably now start to put that supply zone from there to there fundamentally not really a pair that I'm interested in um, because you've got again you've got a uh, central bank that's looking to hike rates or both central banks are looking to hike rates but one is already on that hiking cycle and the other is joining in on the party so uh, if you do want to be a buyer of the Australian dollar really a pull back into that zone there would be decent um, actually be very decent for technically nice fresh area um, but if you're looking for any kind of sell trades, so if you're looking to buy, yes, the Australian dollar, apologies. Um, if you're looking to buy the Australian dollar, then you're looking to you know, buy demand zones. If you're looking at buying the uh, US dollar, I would say anywhere around that 76 to 76, uh, sorry, 76 cent uh, and 76, 50 cent level to the downside. I think that's a really nice area to look for any kind of uh, short trades, but I'm um, not really looking to trade that pair uh, Aussie yen, Aussie yen, looking to get involved in this, but I do think that we are at an expensive area, very expensive area. Um, 
we're at the highs and uh yeah one of the one of the tools i use to to measure you know whether something is expensive or fair value is um is uh, moving averages and i know them as moving fair value and um what i use is the uh monthly uh, fair value so that's the 21 period so 21 trading days generally in a uh in a trading month so anything above that moving fair value is expensive so i really want prices to kind of catch up uh or the moving fair value or fair value to catch up with you know that area there before i look for any kind of uh, long trades um and that will give me a bit more confidence confidence in that area if prices pull back and it's still well above that um monthly fair value then i'm not really looking to take that i personally prefer a deeper pullback wherever that deeper pullback you know comes if it comes down here and then get a, get a buy somewhere around the 88 level then that's for me is is decent but um but yeah let's see what happens prices look like they're auctioning right now um in that area so it could auction for a while so i do think the the first area to look for any kind of buyers for me anyway is going to be that 91 uh, area and uh, if you are looking at any kind of sell trades um, I guess you could technically draw it from here again you've got a wide supply zone but I think the highs are going to be where you want to look for any kind of sell trades and buy the, the, the yen um, not really a buyer at the end at the moment especially with the Australian dollar looking to high crates. Um, so yeah, that's those are the options. And gold, gold, um, I'm a buyer of gold. And uh, yeah, we're seeing prices again pull up. Let me just get rid of the uh, moving fair values. So we did have price come down into that demand zone right here, right? And now we're making a few more highs, I think. Um, can draw another demand zone there. I don't, again, it's not necessarily the strongest area of demand, um, but I do think any pullbacks into this 19 round number or just below it is going to be a really nice buy, I think. Um, with inflation pressures um, going on and as well, uh, just all around the world, and again, even with China, um, their, uh, their coronavirus levels have, have gone you know, higher and higher. I do think that gold is a buy but uh, if you disagree then this is going to be your area to look for any kind of short trades or any short trades in and around uh, this area here but I'm personally going to look for any kind of pullbacks into that zone to look for any kind of uh, long trades anyways guys uh, that's it for this week hope you enjoyed the analysis don't forget to like subscribe and share and uh, take care until next week's video all the best